Uh, welcome back, Sarah. It's not been had you on in a while. Long while. Thanks, yeah. COVID. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you want to wear a mask or you feel sick? I don't know, man. It's a dangerous house. Clearly. I mean, I'm getting scratched in my sleep. I see that. What, uh, what's your feeling on the whole COVID thing? Let's just start out right off the... I'd like to stay home forever and never leave. I'd like to be that hermit. Oh, yeah, same so, here, but what do, you, what do you think about the vaccine and stuff? Like, are you going to get it or? I'm actually scheduled to get it next week. By your so, choice? Yeah, so I figured it doesn't bother me any, so I'm just, I don't really have no opinion at all. If you want the vaccine, get the vaccine. If you don't want the vaccine, that's your business. Sure. Like, I have family members who refuse to get it because they're hyper, hyper Republican. Sure. Like, Fox News is too liberal Republican. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to give an opinion. I'm just going to go to my life and I'm going to try not to start fights. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Where did COVID vaccine and fights get linked together? They, they get linked, man. Everyone's, yeah. my dad, not my dad, uh, relatives are like, why would you do that? You don't know what it'll do. It could poison you. Why would you do that? And I'm like, well, if it poisons me, then good. I can end it faster. God. I'm a millennial. I'm tired of this shit. That's an ongoing joke. Millennials are done with your shit. What's the, what's the age frame for a millennial? I don't know. I'm too old. Well, I'm called an elder millennial. Or an elder. I'm born in the 80s. So that's where that is. And it yeah. ends like early 2000. Oh, really? Okay. Pretty early. Yeah. So maybe like... Part mid but and now everyone's mad about gen z and millennial and we're fighting on tiktok everywhere but now we're teaming up against boomers so it's more fun that way good luck boomers because we don't care we really don't care although right now it's the it's gonna be may thing going on all over tiktok at the moment justin timberlake See, this is why I got to be a millennial. It's in sync. It's a meme. It's every single year on April 30th that goes viral. That's how Justin Timberlake keeps his money. His memes. If only. Learn something new every day, right? I know too much. <coughs> I know too much. I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't know this much about the younger generation, but I know too much. I blame TikTok. I've never heard of that before. You need to get TikTok. Oh, I have TikTok. I just, it's the, the fight for attention on TikTok is so like over, I, I don't even like to like be there. I just watch the funny videos. I'm watching all these like random fights between people that are all made up fights and they're just hilarious to me. Yeah, I've seen those. And that's the other thing too. Every, everybody started like staging stuff. So like, you know, it's fun if I'm in the mood, but I want to see real. Like. There's only certain people that I'm okay with the staging stuff. It just depends on how extreme they go. Mm -hmm. And I love when they out other people. It's really funny to me. It's so bad. But I love the drama because I'm not part of the drama, so I can enjoy it in the background. You, that, uh, that you post on TikTok? So I used to post more before COVID when I could figure the algorithm out and it was working in my favor pretty well. And then COVID hit, everyone's schedules changed and all the algorithms got messed up and now I'm like faded into the distance. So now I'm mostly just binging TikTok on my own in the middle of the night instead of posting as much as I used to. I've got people commenting, why aren't you posting anymore? I'm like, dude, I'm tired. I'm working all day. I got a dog up my ass all day. I'm tired. You got to post more on TikTok. Get more of that in and out there. You know what the Young problem was with TikTok? I don't have boobs, so I don't get a lot of followers. If I put the dog up, I get followers. See, there you go. Put the dog up. Yeah. They only want to see the dog so much, you know? Uh, no, we always want to see the dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My dog's sitting right here, passed out right now. We always want to see the dog. Mine's right there. Oh, she's looking no, at me. I woke her up. <laughs> we're, not, we're, gonna, we're not gonna wake him up. <laughs> oh no, there's there's also some paranormal stuff on TikTok too. That's always the best to watch. Yeah, I don't really find that stuff. I find the, like the apps and stuff, like the fake ones. So I think probably because your algorithm is based off what you've been liking and stuff, it doesn't always come up. So I don't I, like anything. Well, fair enough. <laughs> I just watch it all. I'm not you like, gotta like stuff to get the right want, algorithm. I don't want to like it. <laughs> Social media 101, man. Yeah, I mean, I get how it works. Uh, clearly. So I like the paranormal stuff. So when it comes up, I want to see it and I want to 
watch it and see if it's true or not. And I'll even follow people who have like long parts, like a series based off of how haunted their house is. Right. And what's going on. I never looked at it for that. I can, I can check that out. It's definitely in there. If you look up the hashtag paranormal, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff in there. It's going to be really? a mixture of joke stuff, but it's, you'll find it in the mix. Oh, well, maybe I'll start my paranormal stuff on there. Seriously. People love seeing the paranormal crap because, but it's funny. They always post, I do not accept the negative energy of this video because they don't <laughs> want to have it come to their house. Yeah, you got a, you got a choice in there. <laughs> like, it's okay. It doesn't work that way. You're safe. Yeah. Maybe not from the dark web, but you're safe from this. Um, you're safe from the dead for now. For now. For now. Um, so I looked, uh, I went online and I tried to, I'm so bad. So I bought your last book. <laughs> I, I tried to read some. <laughs> Look, it ain't for everybody. I'm well oh, aware it is. And I've had this problem since high school. Whenever I sit down to read, I'm reading the words, but I'm somewhere totally else. Oh, that's me when I study. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. And then I have to like refocus and then go back. And I just got so much on my mind, I guess. I don't know. But I did try, but I figure, why don't you, why don't you tell us about the one that's coming out? So I did look at it, it was a pre-order. Yeah, this is the last book of the series altogether. This will close out the entire Dead Dreamer series done okay. until I decide to write the next book. You never know. Gotcha. This one closes up Brenna's journey for good. And it also exposes a lot of truth that you're hinted at at all three books to where I've had reviews going, why aren't you answering my questions? Or why is my Brenna so mean all the time? Why is she all this? Well, I finally will give you your answers. Gotcha. She is a bitch for a reason. Okay. People just don't seem to get that. When I did start, I mean, number three, it just jumps right in. And I kind of realized I probably need to read the other two to understand what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I got you're that. Not Got you're that not, off the first page. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get book four unless no. you read all three. Because no, book four is just, wham. I'm I had to put it. a warning at the beginning of book four. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because right. people are so triggered nowadays. I had to put a warning for violence and suicide. And I'm like, look, careful. Because shit's crazy here. I like writing crazy characters. It's more fun that way, and this bitch is crazy. So it's just well, that was, that was going to be my next question. How much of you is in the character? I've had people tell me that I am Brenna, so they can always predict what she's about to say just because they know me so well. Okay. <laughs> or That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I've had some who read it, and they're like, oh, it's so you, or I can't see. You're too nice that way. And I'm like, oh, you know me in a public way. You don't know me in the private way. Gotcha. <laughs> it's very different, dear. It all depends, but she's, you know, this last one explains the dual personality and everything. So it goes deeper into that with Laura. So it, it touches into everything. What's funny though, is I went to Ireland a couple of years ago to do research, geographical research for the ending of the book. Cause I'm like, okay, they're going to, they're going to go there. We'll figure it out. Okay. Cause I want to write about what I've seen. That way I can, it can feel more real. Of course, she goes to other countries that I didn't expect in the book. So I was like, shit. I had to study Google Maps for like an hour to try to figure out what's nearby. What's this? What's this? How can she get here? Do these flights work on this plane? I don't know. I broke many international laws probably in this book. But that just makes it more fun. Entertainment purposes only. I'll put that on there for you. Yeah. <laughs> There's some murder, there's some laws, there's some smuggling, it's fine. Listen, it's fine. Last, uh, last podcast, my guest decided to tell me that she can get human bones from a mortician. So, yeah, I don't, I, don't think you, I don't think your international book writing issue is going to be a problem. Fair enough. Yeah, that was, that was unexpected. I mean, hey, if you got the connections, man. Yeah, but like we're on a podcast. People are watching. Like, so? Oh, I can get people bones. People want a shock value. Shock value. There you go. That's, that was definitely shock value. I'll tell you that much. What's well, ironic is I've been binging the TV show Bones for the last week and a half. So that just went on par with all that. That's funny. I was going to go back to Bones. I cycle through shows and I finished a couple. So now I've cycled back to Bones. And I'll probably start off with The Closer next and go down that criminal side for a while. Did you watch? Have you watched Bosch? Which one? Bosch. No. I just finished. It's six seasons. I just finished it. I started watching it again. This is what I missed. It's pretty good. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. A detective. It's one of those, you know, but it's one case per season. Well, yeah. It's hard for me to watch new shows 
because I'm usually doing 10 other things at the same time yeah. and new shows require my attention. Yeah. Like I haven't even finished the Marvel stuff on Disney plus yet. The WandaVision I've like, I'm halfway through it and it's, I already know what happens. I just haven't finished it yet. Yeah. I want to, yeah. but I'm so tired. And then I got to watch the whole stuff with Falcon and all that. I'm like, God damn it. I have the other problem. I can't find things to watch. I'm always looking. I'll pretend to look, but I always know I'm going to end right back at a, like The Office or Parks and Rec. Just right. one of those. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> um, I am Ron Swanson. What was that? Yeah, Ron Swanson. I didn't know about that until I, somebody told me. And like one episode, I was hooked. I, the first season is hard to get through, but after that, I was able yeah. to work yeah, yeah. my way into it. Yeah. Uh, I want to say, when we were setting up, you had mentioned gaming. And I've had questions about Twitch. Do you do anything on Twitch? Do I do anything on Twitch? Yeah. I've thought about it. I mean, considering the setup, I could easily do it. Right. But I'm going to go with the energy factor again that requires energy. And Don't they just sit there and, like, play games for hours and have people watch? Isn't that, like, what Twitch is? A lot of them do. And sometimes they'll interact with people. They'll, like, have a chat going on the side while they're that. doing it. And they'll just, like, talk while they're gaming. Right. Whereas I'm the type when I game, I have, like, a TV show up while I'm gaming. So I'm watching TV while I'm doing my thing. Okay. So it's hard for me to do that. It's, it's one reason why I don't do a lot of TikTok lives. Like, I do them sometimes. But most of the time, I just want to just chill and watch TV. Yeah. I don't want to have conversations with a screen. <laughs> I should. I just. I should. I don't want to have conversations with anybody. I, I'm such a hermit. COVID has brought that out in me so bad. No one's forcing me to go out and socialize anymore and be part of the world anymore. Because now I can just say disease and hide in the house. When it first happened a year ago, you know, I shut down my store. We were all in lockdown, and yeah, you don't, you don't realize when it's time to go back. Like you get used to not going places. Like it was like, where I gotta go to work? What? Yeah, I'm sure that was rough considering you had a storefront where you had to do all that. Oh, yeah, I, not, haven't made, I haven't made money yet, but I'm not leaving. I'm staying where I am. Yeah, it's not like where I have, like, I have a whole setup here where I can just work directly from home. <laughs> Yay, computers. But. Yeah, luckily I can do, yeah. I can do my podcasting, my editing, all the stuff I do here. I can, you know, all the, all the promotions and stuff I do. I can do it all from here, but for the store. We have the merchandise, I have the podcast booth in the middle, and then I opened, we opened up an escape room in the back room, so we have that going as well. Nice. Yeah, I did a, it's called Lady T's Dead and Breakfast. It's like a horror theme, yeah. Nice. Not bad. I would not do well. <laughs> I get distracted too easily. We've had people come, so when you, when you first come in, you sit down, you watch a video, it's based off my podcast, you watch a podcast and then you get your information and you go in. Right. So the person handing you the room, whoever it is, they give you a flashlight and a key ring with a little key on it. Mm -hmm. I've had people sit in the first room, there's two rooms, and they get stuck in the first room. 15 minutes, they're asking for a hint, and they have a key on their keychain <laughs> that they've yet to even look at. And they're like, er, hint. And That's because like, it's too easy. They're like, use the key. And they're like, oh. Okay. It's too easy. This yeah. key can't be used here. It has to be used in the next room. This is just too simple. Crazy. That would be me. I'd overthink it and be like, no, this key makes it, this is, it's a trick. It's, it's hard when you, if you think like on another level, like it, it can be confusing. This is why you're I can't take so tests. Much and you're like, oh, it's that. This is why I failed school. I can't do tests. I, I overthink because I'm like, this is a trick question. This is not that answer. I'm pretty sure about it. Like logically it makes sense, but this just doesn't, it's a trick. Yeah. It's, a trick. It, it's all a trick. I've done like one escape room and I'm thankful I'm not alone. I'm gonna let everybody else figure it out and I'll just slyly watch from the corner, pretend I'm contributing. I've had people, we've, I watched the teams going there and like one or two of the people will literally just run around and grab stuff. Another one's sitting there trying to figure things out. It's like they go in team and I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's what they did the last time when I did one of those, except they went in teams and I'm like, oh wait, I don't have to do the work. They're doing the work. I mean, I'm up, I'm up for fun and stuff once in a while, but like, I have to go in there, pay money, think, and if I get out, you go, yay, <laughs> you got out. You're what's, alive. What's the motivation for me to do that? Waste an hour of my life. It can be oh, wait fun. A minute, hold on. Anyone watching this? It's an amazing escape. I was like, wait a minute, don't you, you own should, this? Should all check it out. We gotta pitch that out there. <laughs> because I, I'm used to it. That's. It's worth doing. It's just. 
I so the difference in ours is ours has little like scary things to it. It's, yeah. It's dark and stuff like that. Lights go out, so Yeah, they all have different things. Yeah, and if they're in the if they're in it, like, you know, they'll scream and stuff like that. And like, you know, if they're not, then it's like hmm. See, I take stuff home with me, so I just don't need to bring anything home with me. It's just a, it's just an open door. Hi. It's just an open door. Hi. Because I've already got three at home, you know. I hear you. Why do I need to add to them? I'm pretty sure one followed me here, but it's only manifested like once or twice. So I'm not really confident it's permanently here or just like where is there? My house, like my personal house. Oh, oh gotcha. Because the way I see the animals act sometimes, and the way I've like, there's that random moment where you're just like something's off. I don't know. Oh, you've Sus. never been. You've never been here. It's like walking into a you know, like the president's in here, and you got to get through all the secret services. It's, it's <laughs> oh, I've I've lived at it with my dad's house. I grew up in it. I know it. I Man. remember when we were kids, and they took us to Charleston, South Carolina. We went on a ghost tour, and they're like, "Every step is a dead body on the ground, buried beneath." And I'm like, "Isn't that wonderful?" <laughs> And we keep going on these ghost tours and we're in a graveyard and they were pointing out some ghosts. I can't remember the story now, so long ago. And I just remember looking at the graveyard and seeing it and be like, all right, I'm going to keep following the parents and not point it out. Because if you point it out, it knows you see it. Yes. Nope, I'm going to keep going. It knows you see it before you point it out, unfortunately. (laughs) I was a kid, so I'm just going to let it go on the fact that it probably thinks all kids can see it, and I'm just going to keep on going. Yeah, no, all kids can. So that brings up a good question. Home. When you tell somebody these stories that's not like someone like me or you, and they don't believe you, how do you, how do you handle that? You just tell me they'll fuck off. Or... I just give them the, <laughs> the smart Alex face, like, sure. Yeah. Live what you want. Live in ignorance. I... I had, so I grew up in a, I had to go to a Baptist high school because the public school near me was just way terrible like the scores are two out of ten on zillow is how bad it is so i went to a private school and all the girls it was my whole class like the my grade was only 11 people one boy 10 girls that's it so all of them are super religious baptist people therefore all ghosts are demons so i brought one of my friends over to hang out and she didn't believe me so i'm like okay you don't believe me let's go hang out in my sister's room we're going to hang out in my sister's room quietly, play Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Just give it like an hour. And after an hour, she looked at me and went, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, ha-ha. Yeah. She, and ever since then, she just, she believes me now. She didn't used to. She does now. She won't go back into that room. There's a reason I, when I, my sister moved out, I moved into that room because it's like, it's your big sister's room. You get the, the cool bedroom. Yeah, I stayed there for like a week and said no. She figured that out quickly. So usually if I can prove it, they're just, they are not okay that I've proved it. Okay. <laughs> Whereas the others, they're just, they still are like, no, it's the house settling or it's yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, because house settling is actual words being said that you can hear <laughs> sentences. Yeah. You know, sure. <laughs> I mean, my dad doesn't believe in them. He doesn't think there's anything in the house. But he, they don't bother him. Yeah. Like, they've never bothered him. But me and my sister were kids growing up. Therefore, we always knew they were there. So they kind of latched onto us, I think. And that little girl was there. But she left with my mom when she died, I think. I'm pretty sure my mom took her and they left. Is that room still active? I don't know. I don't hang out in there a lot. Where is it? It's my sister's room. Is it in this house or is it a different place? It's in my dad's house in Richmond. Oh, okay. So right now it's a guest bedroom. So it's where my stepsister and her son will sleep sometimes. And they're, they don't want to believe it. So I try not to antagonize it because my stepmom has threatened me to my life. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just leave it be. So I think maybe you should invite me as a guest to stay in that room. Good luck, but then you got to deal with my dad. Just tell him it's for a TV show. (laughs) Yeah, that's not going to help your case. Um. No. I'm, not, I'm charming. I could try that. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to help your case. No. He's like super antisocial. Money? Does that work? That would work on me. Okay. Well, but you're, um, you're going to be there doing it with me. I'm just saying, I can be paid off. <laughs> here, here, pay to sit in that. It doesn't work. 
I don't know if they're as active as they used to be. I don't live there anymore because they mainly followed me and my sister. So I'm not quite sure how active they are. I know last year they were a little more active because when I was home for Christmas, I heard them. Right. But it's very hit or miss now ever since we've left the house. It's not the same as when we grew up. And sure. I think it's because the energy is different. Definitely. My stepmom is a very different energy than what my mom was and my dad was. Like, way more energy. So, I think they got tired. <laughs> That's a feat. <laughs> God love her, but we are low-key people. <laughs> I now get cards for every holiday that's not a holiday. I'm like, okay. I sure. them a I don't, holidays don't exist. People say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my excuse to take PTO, so I will take it. Uh, it's my excuse to go home and sleep instead, because my weekends now consist of nothing but falling asleep and not waking up till like, I gotta walk the dog. It's exciting. What's funny is my neighbor actually i um, became friends with her during covid because she got a puppy at the same time i did so that's how we bonded gotcha. and she didn't believe in any of this stuff too because she's a little bit more religious and then when i tell her all my stories she's like you're just exaggerating for the shock value and i'm like you'd think so but i'm really not yeah because then i told her more personal stories because i have no filter and yeah. i like she's <laughs> like stop talking <laughs> no i'll tell you anything you want to know yeah, in the same way. Don't ask if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I have no filter, not at all. No, same. She won't let me do tarot cards. Because <laughs> that's way too accurate. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I deal with the non-believer aspect because my partner, George, who, I don't think you met him. He, uh, he doesn't, he's my partner in this and he does it, but he never believes until something happens and then he can't explain it, so he kind of believes for that minute, but then he goes back to not believe. It's probably a defense mechanism. It's like yeah. mentally safer if there's not anything, we were which I get. We were standing there once, nothing around us. I'm talking to him. The only thing above him is ceiling, like no, nothing. Mm -hmm. And a piece of glass just fell, like hit him on the floor. And I was like, what was that? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, we found that it's a piece of glass. And I'm like, Where'd the glass come from, George? And he's like, well, maybe it was. I'm like, yeah, let me go ahead and <laughs> this one. <laughs> it was, who, who did you piss off today, George? <laughs> yeah. Who did you piss off today? No, nope. that one, if I ask him in front of people, I go, when he's like, well, I don't believe that. I'm like, well, explain the glass. And he'll be like, well, that one I can't explain. <laughs> ha, I win. He actually had a lot of them that he just, he does that. He, it's, it's almost like it's too scary to believe or something, so he blocks it. But, I mean, he got hurt at one of our investigations. It was in, you know, we, we recorded it. He got out of the car. Something made him, like, twist. I mean, you know, that's like you coming out of your car and falling. Like, you do it every day. Well, like, that's pretty standard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there, there's actually a YouTube show I used to watch a lot. It doesn't really come on anymore because I think the two creators have moved on to do their own thing, so they're not with BuzzFeed anymore. Right. But it's um, BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural. Okay. So they'll investigate ghost stories, and one guy firmly believes in supernatural everything. The other guy, straight up, nope, nothing exists. Yeah, that's us. So watching the two of them and their interactions with it is great, because one's freaking the fuck out. Right. The other guy's like, are you okay? And he's just screaming, hey, demons, come and get me. And where are they, YouTube? Yeah, they're on YouTube, and it's actually on Amazon Prime, I think, because it's BuzzFeed. Okay. So it's Unsolved Supernatural, and it's great, because once every season, they'll go and investigate a demon case. Okay. And there's one episode where they're at a co-worker's house and investigating with that box where they, it speaks through it. Yeah. And it's not the static one. It's the one where it actually, like, picks up frequencies and will say words. I got it. Oh, watching him freak out was the best thing ever. It was so funny, because they had a psychic with them, too, at the same time, and they're just like... Yeah. What's happening? We actually got critiqued on that because when we would do our investigations and go film, George was like that. And I guess when you're scared, like, he makes jokes. Yeah, and, that's what I do. Right. And they didn't, like, everybody who watched it loved it, but, like, TV people who saw it, it was too, it wasn't serious enough for paranormal for what they expect, people expect on TV or something. That's why that BuzzFeed show is so... And that's what I said. Everybody the way where, like, everybody that sees it, not everybody has to go there and be like, oh, my God, what was that? Like Rick tells me all the time, he's like, well, do you get scared? And I'm like, no, I don't. I can react like, oh shit, that was awesome. But I'm not gonna be like, Ooh, what was, it? like it doesn't happen. 
See, if you get me in there, I'm going to like investigate hear sounds and go, son of a bitch. God, I'm just going to get angry. I get more like, if I see something, I'm like, I'm not leaving. Come on out. Like I challenge everything face to face because I guess my mentality is what like, okay, so I say something and this big dark figure comes in it like, what are you going to do? <laughs> My See, brain is strong enough that it's not going to, like, take over, so I don't understand what it's possibly going to So you do. challenge it. I just get pissed off at it because I'm like, I thought we had an agreement here. <laughs> well, when you go into places, there's no, those aren't your people. <laughs> there's no agreements. I mean, fine, but we had an agreement here. <laughs> you had an agreement with somebody else. To the whole other side, you leave me, I leave you. I know you're there. You know I'm here. We got this. We have a balanced life. Stop tormenting the cat. Yeah, I don't have that agreement, unfortunately. I know they're there. I write that they're there. <laughs> I've seen them in my last, like my last apartment had an old lady just chilling there. Yeah. I'd see her occasionally through like reflection of my shower glass. And I'm looking at her like, can we, can we just not today? Because <laughs> I'm sure you're disapproving of something I'm doing. And it's, I don't, I don't care. And my mom, she comes to me in dreams all the time and I'm getting lectured and I'm like, this is just not fair because I'm getting away with stuff because you're not here yet. I'm still getting yelled at it even though you're not here. <laughs> what? What's the point? I swear. I remember my sister and my dad actually, when she first passed, they went to psychics to like discuss the afterlife because neither of them were able to like accept that loss. Gotcha. So they wanted the afterlife explanation or just some kind of connection. And sure. my sister was talking to a psychic once and she was just, she only talked about me a little bit to just, just, you know, the family dynamic. And apparently if I remember correctly, the psychic said something about my, the book series I wrote is pretty on point. It's not totally right. Cause obviously it's fictionized, but my concepts of the afterlife is actually more accurate than it seems. Because I already have a connection to it, thanks to what I've been exposed to growing up. Now I'm just like, all right, now when I die, I'm going to compare notes. I got to really check. And then I'll come back to some psychic and say, hey, go to my books, put them out there and say, this is right. Read them, save yourselves. Because you never I know. Do it. I do it for you, but I'll probably be long down. <laughs> you know, I, it's, we're in a pandemic. Who the hell knows what's going to happen next? Who would have thought in 2020 we'd all be sequestered? Crazy. I think back to, I look back at shows and like everyone talking about 2016 and how much of a wild ride that year was. Like, yeah. wow. We didn't even know. Wait till all the COVID conspiracy movies come out now. That's oh the next God. few years. Yep. Yep. Oh, I gotta say, like I put it out, I put it out there. I, I went and I had to get my shot. Um, I actually got it under protest. I just don't want it, but I wasn't allowed to continue with this journey with the production crew unless I'm vaccinated. That's one reason why I'm also getting it. Yeah, I, I, kind of, no I, <laughs> I, I was figuring that might come up. So I, was yeah. like, I might as well bite the bullet and just do it now. Nick, you're actually going to get it just in time too, because next couple of weeks or so. Um, but it's just, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what they put in me. Like, you know, I can go into that. Like one day I wake up and, oh my God, we all need a shot. Like, um, um, okay. I don't know. I'm going to die somehow, some way. So just give me the shot. You know, I actually think COVID cured dementia because I have a grandmother who has wild dementia, who is like accusing us of plotting her murder to steal her billions. Okay. Which if we have billions, I'd love to know where that is. And she got COVID with pneumonia in mid 2020. So we're like, she probably won't last long with dementia. You know, that she just went right through it. She came out and she was so much nicer and she was more back to herself. And it was weird because I haven't seen that in a long time. And then she got the vaccine. And now we're back to the murder accusations again. And I'm like, you cured her dementia and, you gave and then you took it away. There seriously needs to be a study with this, with COVID and dementia. Because there has been showing where COVID can mess with the brain chemistry. Yeah. So I'm like, see, it's a, it's a fix. You fixed it and then you broke it. I just don't know what happened to like bodies having immune systems. 
Like if I get COVID, I'll get sick and I'll heal. Good. Well, we're also not on the high risk end. I know a lot of people who are on the high risk end. So that's why I stay home just because it's gotcha. easier. I go to the gym. Don't get me wrong. I will not skip the gym. Once that bitch reopened, I was there. But I went back, but the masks working out really wasn't doing it for me. So my gym doesn't have that rule. We just have to wear, you have to wear the mask coming in and when you're transitioning, but while you're actually working out, as long as you keep your distance, then you don't have to wear your mask while you're working out. Cause they've spaced yeah. out even all the cardio. So you're not right next to someone each time. Even now it's still. They did that too, but they make us. But, but you, do you guys have like, we have laws here. Like we have to wear a mask. Like it's not optional. Like we have to. We have laws, but I'm pretty sure as long as you're spaced. Yeah, not a, I don't know. No one's yelled at me yet, so. We can take our mask off outside if we're spaced from people. But you can't even get in a building with that. Like, if somebody tries to get, we can just trespass and like, they can't come in. Huh. Yeah. I don't know, because I've been doing it. But I'm also going at 4 a.m., so there's only, like, four other people there. Yeah. And we all know each other, so it's not like yeah. we're all going to scream, no mask, and run away. <laughs> yeah. But I know, because I've gone to a couple places and taken a mask off, but it's not, it's just because it's been empty. But I'll still wear it. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me now that I have to wear glasses again. Because now it's fogging my glasses every time I wear it. Oh, I didn't think about that, yeah. And I can't get contacts until like July because of my insurance. So I was like, God oh, damn it. Because apparently my LASIK wore off. So back to glasses it is. I didn't know it wears off. Yeah, it wears off, it wears off at about like 10 to 15 year mark. Uh, so it starts to like weaken over time. Because your eyes are going to weaken no matter what with age. Yeah. So it's just because my vision was so bad before, it's slowly weakening again. Close up or far away? It used to be all the above. Now it's I can't see far away. So I've always been, I guess that's nearsighted when you can't see far away. And maybe like two years ago, my vision just started getting better for no reason. And the lady was like, well, it's okay. going happen sometimes. I'm like, okay. Okay, there's no reason to rub it in. <laughs> because some of us are just going to go blind. Oh, trust me, I'm blind. It just went a little better. Like, what's your... Uh, uh, why, here, I, I'll give you a good left. What's your prescription? I don't Let know. No. You don't, don't know? know? Probably like a minus it's, two or three or something. It's a, it's a number on a paper. I don't know. I just say, hey, here glasses. I say, okay. If you take your glasses off, how, how much of the thing can you read without the glasses? I can't read my diplomas over there, but I can at least watch the TV. It's just slightly blurry. Oh, no, no. If I'm sitting 10 feet from the TV, I'm... Mm -mm. It's just a mess. Well, the only reason I realized it was getting bad is because one, driving at night was getting a bit dicey. Yep. And then when Cyberpunk came out, it's so detailed and smaller on the screen. I'm like, why can't I see this shit? <laughs> so I was pulling my TV stand all the way to the couch to play this game because it was driving me nuts <laughs> other than the crashing problem. That's old age. So I was like, God damn it. So I got my eyes checked. I'm like, son of a. I got glasses though, and I'm playing the game like this is what it's supposed to. Jesus, mother! <sighs> so mad. Do you have uh, Do you have an ocul uh, Oculus or anything? No, but I've been watching Josh Dub and Narrator and them on YouTube and TikTok a lot. Mm -hmm. They're freaking hilarious on there with Rekid, and I kind of want to get one just because it looks so funny. I have it, and some of the things are. I mean. If you want a good time, no matter how bad a mood you are, just go into a chat room. And it's so <laughs> weird, the crap that happens in there. It's, I've seen some of it, and I'm like, what is, this? What is happening? It is insanity, but you, like, you can't try to like, participate. You just, just have to watch. literally sit, like, find a spot and just sit there and watch who comes to you. And like, you can't see the people. See, like somebody like me, right, right, yeah. like, you just, all of a sudden, like, there's no reading. It's just, you just hear them and you're like, what? They're it's, right next it's, to me. They're insane. They're well, insane. I also am the person who grew up watching anime, and there were quite a few animes of going into VR and getting trapped. Okay. So I might have a latent <laughs> fear of that, or also playing the game and stepping on a cat or a dog as I play. Did or, you, my house is very small, so there's not a lot of room to move without hitting something. Did you see the, uh, the plank walk in? You go, up in, so. you go up into an elevator at the top of a building and the elevator door opens and there's like a piece of wood in front of you and you got to walk on it. 
Yeah, I think I saw some people on YouTube playing it. I've seen grown people like fall, like scream. It's like, it, I mean, it's scary when you do it. It just takes a minute to be like, oh no, I'm tricking. Like the first thing when you do it, yeah. But after you convince yourself, but I've seen people that can't do it. They like, they take it off like, no. I'll just look and go, all right, it's a balance beam. It's a balance beam. Let's do this. Balance beam. And then walk right into the TV. It's better outside. If you're outside and there's wind blowing, it's a lot more realistic than if you're in the house. Yeah, that just sounds. If like you're going to put a foot out, and you get a gust of wind. That just that just sounds like a heart attack waiting to happen. And it's actually, you know, the um, the haunted games are actually. I wouldn't say they're scary, but they they can definitely startle you if you're not. You I know, watched just, some of the Josh Devin then play one where it's like you're pretending to be paranormal investigators. Oh, I didn't so see you that. have you have a mission on the whiteboard that you're each going to do this task when you go into this building. Oh. My dog lost her mind. So we go into this building and you try to like do a paranormal investigation inside this building and it just goes completely haywire. And there's a couple others where they're horror like that, but they're wearing their character suits from like the VR chats. Okay. So I guess when you're in those games, you don't have to be a specific character. You just look, they look ridiculous in these horror games, but they're completely goofing around. So it just makes it a lot more fun. There's one guy named Eddie who will be playing the game, trying not to get scared, and then he just starts screaming in Mexican and Spanish because he's so <laughs> scared. He's just screaming because he's freaked out. And one of them will go, dude, I don't speak Taco Bell. Stop screaming. I don't know what you're saying. It's just their interactions are great, especially with the horror because they watch them freak. They just freak out. It's great. That's what I thought about going on Twitch and just, you know, uh, streaming like some of the horror games and just going through it. But I don't... I don't know. I don't know if I'm crazy enough for that. Like, I can be, but I don't know if I want to be. <laughs> See, you're just going to get a lot of screaming, and my neighbors are going to start complaining, and they're just going to get mad because I'm yelling cuss words, and they've got kids. <laughs> and I'm just going to be really mad and punch my computer screen when something jumps at me. And then I've got to pay $200 for a new computer screen, and it's just going to be a bad day. So I just watch it all on YouTube, watch other people freak out, and it makes me feel better. <laughs> all right. Like, I watch Dad's Black play all the indie horror games where you get, like, the demo to play it. Okay. And I'm watching this, like, Dude, I'd piss my pants so fast. I'm playing, like, I'm in the dark right now in my house. This is just asking for trouble. Especially when I go to bed. I'm going to, every, I'll hear one noise. What's that? What's that? Say goodnight. That's what I do. Good night. All right, good night. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I end up with this on my head. So you just never know what's going to happen at night. <laughs> I get it. I've woken up with many a random scratch, even when I didn't have a cat. Yeah, it's like, you know, this is just not fair. You don't have a body that I, I woke up with a, I woke up the other day with a, like a cigarette burn. That was a new one. I've never worked, I've never woke up with a burn before. It's actually a blister, like, I was like, what, what? like, eh. Oh, yeah, uh, see, I, it's, it's not fair. They don't have a body you can hurt back. <laughs> so how am I supposed to get revenge if I can't hurt you back? You can release them and send them on their way, but that's a good fight. That's not getting them back. Oh, they, it gets them, them back. No, well. That's giving them freedom. That's not revenge. It is because they don't want to, but then in the end, it works out for them, yeah. Yeah, see, my version of setting them free is get the fuck out, we're done. I can't wait to get you in an investigation and see how you. Oh, God. This is going to be great. I think we're almost through our uh, COVID restrictions, and people are seeming the people are coming into the store and they're more receptive to letting us come back in and do investigations and stuff. So I believe in the next month or so we'll be back out there. It should be interesting. I mean, personally, I've never been afraid of it all just because I am not at risk. So at the most I've, there could be a chance I'd catch it, but not symptom. I don't know. Like I'm that dumbass that went to Florida last July in the middle of all of it to Key West. So we had this discussion on the last one. Do you know your blood type? A plus positive. Oh, most of the, most of the O negatives haven't been getting COVID. I've watched the thing about it. I think it's because I've kept up my routine. So, because I stay well hydrated because my workouts make me thirsty all the time. And now that my dog is over a year old, we're now going on jogs for two miles every morning. Oh, okay. So I'm doing my normal routine as well as going for an outdoor jog. Sure. I'm doing extra stuff. So I haven't been out of breath in that kind of way. Gotcha. Yet, just regular cardio death way. Yeah. So I figure if the day I can't breathe when I walk, then I'll know. Everybody I know that's close to me had it. 
family, friends, girlfriends. At the time. Yeah, like I just I was around them and I didn't get it. Hmm. That's I, I wasn't looking for shot. I really didn't care. But my goddaughter, I think, was exposed to it, but I don't think they got it either. If I remember correctly, I think it's just my grandma's. Yeah, she really got it. That was about it. My sister did. My sister get it. I don't remember. I blocked her out. What shot do you have scheduled? Which one? What? Uh, I don't know. Oh, you don't know? You, don't that, know that you literally just sign up for a vaccine and then you get whatever they have. Oh, see over here, you get your appointment. You can choose which one they tell when you make your appointment, they tell you which one you're getting. I got Pfizer. I got, I didn't so, go. You can, choose by, you can choose by location and what they have. Okay. So I didn't choose a place that had Johnson and Johnson because obvious. So I picked one that just had one of the two. And then I'll just get what because I have no, a lot of my coworkers and friends they've all gotten it and they've gotten the both of them so it's pretty much the same symptoms either way it doesn't really matter. Yeah, everybody around here that got them, uh, the people that got the Moderna, they basically had like a a twenty four hour like simulated uh, COVID, and the people that got the Pfizer, I mean, a couple people said sore arm, but I don't know anybody that felt anything from that one. Oh, everyone I know said sore arm. And then, I, I didn't get a sore arm. I was surprised. My uncle did my dad. My father is 70 something. He got his shots. Nothing. He didn't, not a wink. I'm curious because mine's scheduled on a Monday and then the next two days are bicep days. So I'm like, well, these workout days could really suck. No, your shoulder day will suck because that's where it's going. Your shoulder. Oh, God. That's what's going to suck. Shoulder already sucks. I don't want them to do it worse. When, when you get home from doing your shot, do about as many push ups as you can. Just get the blood in there and it'll take it away. You should be fine. God, push up. See, now you're just torturing me in two different ways. That's literally all I do. I used to be, I used to be, oh my God, a couple years ago, I was a 285 pound power lifter. That's all I did all day was lift and eat, lift and eat, lift and eat. Um, I actually did my first power clean today. Did you? Lift, where it's like, you had to throw it up. I know, I'm trying, I'm not, I know what they all are. I'm doing mind. it with just 45 pound bar and I'm like, fuck this, God. Because I started I with a new app to do a workout like that. I have pictures that you could see. You'll be like, if I show you, you'll be like, what? I don't, I don't even look like me. Look like I ate me. It's bad. I mean, I used to be fit because I used to eat well. And now I'm like, screw it. I want that pizza. <laughs> I ate a whole Papa John's pizza tonight with a whole Papa John's pizza cookie. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> okay. Tacos, queso, screw it. I, don't, I work out enough to keep it even. Yeah. I do push ups and intermittent fasting. That's it. I couldn't do that. I would throw up. I need to eat. I'm a fat ass. I, need I used to eat, eat every couple hours, and now I can literally go a day. And it's like, I don't even feel it. I can't understand how people do that. Because a lot I'm of my friends either. do that, and I can't do it. I'm starving all the time. Once you get past that initial hunger, and you go pet, and then it's almost hard to get hungry again. There's no get past. There's either throw up or get a headache. <laughs> I choose to eat. Like, I eat a lot. Just to make myself slow down, when I'm eating, like, strawberries or blueberries, I'm making myself eat it with chopsticks, because I can't use chopsticks well just so I won't scarf it down. She just said she eats strawberries with chopsticks. These are my guests. Yeah, what else <laughs> am I supposed to do? You want to hang Shut, with, I, a normal crew? <laughs> well, if you wanted normal, then you shouldn't have brought me along. No, we, we don't do normal in this group. <laughs> Normal's not what I do. Nah, nobody wants to watch normal. That's boring. It is. Being weird is more fun anyway. Hence why being a hermit's more fun than being a socialite. I, when, I was on Bumble last year. I would go out on a date and I, I had multiple people be like, you're weird. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. But at least you were willing to go on the date. That was a, it was a phase. <laughs> it gets See, boring quick. I have been part of many a dating app and I've never been on one. Well, okay, it's like I was on like one or two five years ago. But now I'll join randomly because I'm like, let's see. Let's see after, who likes me, but I won't go. After two weeks, I'm like, yeah, delete. <laughs> I'm not playing this game. Because I actually learned from hanging out with my friends. We figured out, because growing up, this like all the open sexualities were not a thing when we were growing up as much. It was just straight or gay. That's it. Right. Turns out, I'm the asexual one of the group. <laughs> I'm like, well, shit. I didn't know I had a definition. <laughs> this explains so much. And it also explains my characters and my books. It explains so much and why I don't give a shit. Yeah, you're a character, right? I mean, why not? It's more fun. I got hate. I agree. 
And this isn't even drunk me. This has just exhausted me. <laughs> this isn't even drunk me. <laughs> this is me past my bedtime. Past your bedtime? What time is it? It's 9.50. My bedtime is 8.30. I wake up at 3.30. You know we film at like 11, right? You have to prep yourself for that. Uh, <laughs> like, there's no daytime investigations. <laughs> you yeah, sleep all day and come out with the owls. <laughs> that's weekends. Because I got a job, man. Well, it'll be fine. That pays for my mortgage. We'll, we'll work around it for you. Because I'm old and I got a mortgage. I'm old. The millennial is saying she's old. <laughs> yes, everything creaks and pops and <laughs> snap, crackle, pop. Oh. And I get a headache if I don't drink a soda. It's just bullshit. Well, it looks like we bored everybody for about an hour. <laughs> if you have anything you want to wrap up, why don't you tell everybody what you do? Like, I just, you know, we never give you like an introduction. Like, what do you, just introduce yourself to the world. Where, you know? Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm in <laughs> for a hobby. Not first day. I'm a day. functioning alcoholic. I like to kill things when I go hunting. You know, I'm asexual because I think people are gross. And I don't like people, but I got, I got an award at work for being nice to people over the phone because I lie well. And there you have it. Until next time, stay safe. And also, play some software. <laughs>